A few weeks ago, we released a video talking about all of the different keyword match types for Google search campaigns. If you didn't see that video and you want to check it out, you can watch it right here. But in that video, when we talk about broad match, I mentioned that I had some thoughts and opinions about how broad match works, and I would be talking about them in a later video. Well, this is that video. I want to be clear that I don't think broad match is inherently or categorically bad. There are absolutely some scenarios where it can work really well. I've just seen too many instances where it's not used effectively and it costs advertisers a lot more money than it should. So in this video, what I want to do is run through some of the reasons why people use broad match keywords, talk about some strategies that you might test before you use broad match, and then close out by talking about how to use broad match as efficiently and effectively in your account so that you don't become one of those cautionary tales. The first thing I want to talk about is why people use broad match in the first place, because it is an option. Lots of people use it and the reasons to not use it or ideas about how to use it differently usually stem back to why they use it in the first place. The first reason that people normally use broad match is that they genuinely don't know that there are other match types in the Google ads interface or Google ads editor. When you add keywords to your account, all you have to do is start typing. It doesn't prompt you to add brackets or quotation marks to designate different match types. You just start adding, just start typing. You can get carried away before you know it. All of your keywords are broad match. There's a pretty quick fix for this reason. And it's the video that I alluded to in the intro where we go through all the different match types and how they work. So just making people aware is an easy way to potentially coax them away from using broad match to start. One of the other main reasons that people use broad match is because Google recommended it. A lot of accounts I see and work in have this as one of the top recommendations in the account. It says to upgrade your existing keywords to broad match. Now, regardless what I think about the word upgrade in this scenario, this is a very big push that Google has been putting forth over the past few years. They very much want advertisers to shift to utilizing broad match keywords in conjunction with smart bidding. I'll cut to the chase on this one. If you're going to use broad match, I also encourage you to use smart bidding, but we'll talk about how to make that effective later on. But in my opinion, this is a misleading recommendation because it talks about upgrading to broad match, which is going to get more reach. It says it's going to get you more conversions and it says it's going to give you more cost. And then it also factors in to your optimization score within the account, which many advertisers who don't know what the optimization score is, try to get that to be 100%. And 100% optimization score just means that you're doing what Google wants you to do, not necessarily what's in the best interest of your account. So even if this strategy is viable, and we'll talk about it again a little bit later on, I still think this is a highly misleading recommendation. And a lot of people will simply click that apply button and just opt into broad match without understanding everything that goes into it. The last reason that people use broad match is to try and find scale within the account. There's no denying that broad match can get you the most volume for your keywords of any of the match types. Exact and phrase are going to be more restrictive. Broad will give you the greatest reach, but there's a lot of things that we need to do to make sure that we grow effectively to find that scale and see the performance that we need to see. So these are the three main reasons I encounter for why people use broad match. Obviously the first one is remedied by the previous video or multiple different help articles. The second reason is something that we'll talk about a little bit later to get the most out of it if you're going to use it. But trying to find scale in the account is something that I think can be addressed in different ways before opting into broad match. So let's talk about a couple of those. First, if you're looking for scale in your search account and you're seeing good performance, simply do more keyword research and find more exact match and phrase match keywords to add into your account. You can do this either through the Google Keyword Planner, which we have a video on when you can check out at the top of the screen right now, or you can do this by reviewing your search query reports and finding the types of terms that people are searching and triggering your ads for and using those as some root keywords to try and either conduct additional keyword research or add them into your account. Account. There's a number of different ways you can find new exact and phrase match keywords to add to your account. And since they're more restrictive and they usually are tighter focused, you can usually get better performance out of them simply by adding additional keywords and having more coverage. The second option is to test dynamic search ads. I've always been a big fan of dynamic search ads. They certainly are not perfect, but I think in a number of different accounts, depending on your website, they can be a great option. For those of you who don't know what dynamic search ads are, 
rather than providing Google with a list of keywords and trying to find search queries that match from individual users, you provide your website or a number of pages on your website to Google. They will then analyze the content of your site and utilize the text and imagery and all that sort of thing, as you can see in this middle section of this graphic, to generate assets and ads from your website. And then they will match those to user search queries in the same way they would for keywords, but the information you gave them was your website rather than a list of specific keywords. For now, that's as in-depth as I'm going to get on dynamic search ads. But the good news is that we do have a video that goes over all of the setup processes for a Google Ads dynamic search ads campaign if you want to check that out. These are the only real ways that you can scale search within a Google Ads account if you're not trying to add in additional geographies and all that sort of thing. Now, there might be some of you who are thinking, well, what about Performance Max or anything along those lines? And that can be a good option, but that also includes all different sorts of networks works. For this video, I'm trying to focus only on search campaigns. So let's assume you've added all of the exact and phrase match keywords you can have. You've already added dynamic search ads and you're ready to pull the trigger on broad match keywords in your account. At this point, I have a handful of suggestions of things for you to do before and after you launch those broad match keywords in your account and some suggestions for settings as well. So let's hop into those. First thing, if you're going to use broad match, I suggest you do some proactive negative keyword research. It's the exact same thing as keyword research, but you're using it from the perspective of finding new negatives. Since the broad match keywords are going to be less tightly focused on the exact search term people are typing in, one of the best ways you can find negative keywords for those broad match keywords is to use them in the Google Keyword Planner. One thing that I pretty much always start with is taking the website of any account I'm working on add it into the keyword planner, and then get the results and see what Google thinks about my website. What are the suggested search terms that come up? No matter how specifically you've written your website, I guarantee you, you'll probably find some suggested keywords in there that are obviously better as a negative. And if you can get ahead of those and add those as a negative keyword to your campaign before you even launch it, you'll save yourself money. So spend a little bit of time, whether it's through the website functionality or starting with keywords, use the keyword planner and see what types of negatives you can add to your broad match campaign before you get started. The next suggestion for setup is going to be to utilize the automated bidding strategies like Google recommended. Manual or enhanced CPC bidding can already be relatively difficult and requires a decent amount of manual input and regular reviews to make sure that you're trending things in the right direction. It also has some nuances of making sure that you don't double up bid adjustments based on the same set of data. There's a lot that goes into it, and if you're not going to be hyper vigilant and have a set of rules in place, it's probably better to let the machines handle it. But with using automated bidding, you need to make sure that you have enough conversion volume on the action that you want these keywords to generate. If you're trying to use broad match and utilize automated bidding and you only have one conversion every month on average, this probably isn't the right option for you. Automated bidding does best when it has a lot of data, so make sure that you have a lot in the mix. Additionally, you can set bidding restrictions. Google has a number of different bidding strategies, and some of them have nuanced settings within them. For example, there is a maximize conversions bidding strategy that if you set it just as the basic setup on maximize conversions, it will try to get you as many conversions as it possibly can. But there is a subsetting that allows you to set a target CPA where you get to tell Google what you want the cost per conversion to be, not just maximizing conversions in general. The same thing is true for a return on ad spend bidding strategy. There's also different things on maximizing clicks and target impression share. So make sure you know what all those settings are. For the sake of this video, it does not make sense for me to tell you what those are, but if you're interested in learning more about them, we do have a Google Ads bidding strategy video on the Paid Media Pros channel that you can go check out and find out everything that you need to know to get started. Now, the last thing I want you to do if you're going to use broad match with the automated bidding strategies, no matter what happens here, make sure that you review your performance regularly, especially shortly after launch. If I launch new campaigns, whether I use broad match, phrase, or exact match, I pretty much review search queries every day to every other day. I would highly recommend you do that for broad match, at least for the first week or so. After that, you can back off because you will have added in negatives that are helping to kind of narrow down what you're targeting, but make sure that you're keeping a very close eye on the search queries and they're not getting too far out of hand. We're all in this to make money eventually, so watching your conversion metrics is going to be a big deal. 
Are you actually hitting the KPIs that you want to hit with these bidding strategies and these broad match keywords? Or are you too far out of field and it's not going to come back? With any new strategy that you launch, there's going to be a learning phase. So I would not expect for this campaign type on day one to start generating conversions for exactly the cost per conversion that you want. But after the first week, couple of weeks, maybe even a month, if it's still not hitting the performance benchmarks you need, you might need to make a larger change. And then lastly, lead quality. E-commerce accounts don't have this problem. When you make a sale, the revenue is the revenue, you know the numbers. Lead generation campaigns have a secondary phase all around lead quality. Just because you generated a lead does not mean it's a good lead. And Google is very good at going out and getting leads for a low cost that can be very hit or miss on quality. So even if you are generating lots of leads, make sure that you're reaching the right people. They're actually potential clients that you can work with rather than just generating lots of leads that you can't do anything with. And then lastly, mitigate your risk by starting small with a small budget and scale up only after the first few weeks when you've added in new negative keywords, you're seeing good performance, and you're actually able to start to scale after that. Don't start by shooting the moon and having a huge budget on these campaigns because I will pretty much guarantee you Google will spend it whether you're getting the returns that you want or not. In the end, broad match still isn't my favorite. I'm not gonna lie. I don't like using it if I can do almost anything else to try and generate more volume because I've seen too many times where it simply just does not generate what I want it to. Now on the flip side, I also will admit that there are some accounts that I have worked in where broad match with automated bidding is the best strategy and other strategies that we've tested just have not worked. The only issue is you don't really know which account you're in until you test until you optimize, until you see how each of them works. So whether or not you love broad match, hate it, are thinking about reluctantly using it in your account, hopefully this overview has given you some ideas as to what you can do potentially instead of using broad match, or at least some strategies to make it hopefully more profitable sooner in your account. Just like everything else, if you have any additional questions about broad match strategies, how the keyword match types work, or just anything else, feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.